Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay guys, a few weeks ago you saw my 20 worst books from 20 authors in under 20 minutes, which was a video idea I kind of borrowed from Beauty YouTube uh, where they are talking about brands and products. Here we're talking about books and authors. So I picked 20 authors, I picked their best book and I picked what I thought was their worst book. I am shooting for objectively best and objectively worst based on what I've read, but like, of course there's some level of subjectivity to that, of course, but I'm trying not for my favorite, but what I think is closest as possible to objectively what their best and worst book is. So you guys saw the worst, time for the best now, same 20 authors. I think I mentioned this in the other video too. A lot of this tends to be genre fiction just because I wanted to pick authors for whom I had read several books and more often than not that means that they're going to be writing some kind of genre fiction. So with that being said, I've only got 20 minutes so I gotta get to get in here. Let's do this. Okay, number one is Alona Andrews. And I went back and forth because I, I ultimately picked Magic Breaks by Alona Andrews, but I went back and forth between this and Wildfire. Wildfire is a, a fantastic series ending book. It's the end of a trilogy and I think it is fantastic. However, I think I would ultimately say this one is a little bit better only because it is paying off things that have built up over the seven book arc at this point so satisfyingly. Like this is just like one of the best examples I can point to of like how to pay off things that you have been setting up really well. So I'm gonna say objectively I think this is the best Alona Andrews book but Wildfire is a close second. Number two, I decided to go with Heart of Obsidian by Nalini Singh. Now, funnily enough, last time we talked about Tangle of Need, which is number 11 in the Side Changeling series. This is number 12 in the Side Changeling series. And I was between this and number 10 as the best book in that series. Like I think Tangle of Need is a dip in what is overall like the best part of that whole series. I decided to go with this as the best book she ever did because similarly to The Magic Breaks, this pays off something that had been building over, in this case, a 12 book series. It, it lets you in on a secret or whatever. Um, it tells you who somebody is that you haven't known their true identity. And it is really satisfying. I think it deals with all of the tropes that this series has really well. It's satisfying in terms of the macro arc. And yeah, it's just really excellent example, I think, of paranormal romance slash urban fantasy. A good example where what I picked does not align with my personal favorite because my personal favorite Narnia book is The Magician's Nephew and I almost chose that because I do think that it is doing things that are sometimes kind of more interesting I think than this but this book is iconic. This book like launched a thousand series. It is foundational to the modern fantasy genre as we know it today in terms of a portal fantasy it is unparalleled, I think, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, I I kind of wanted to have a hot take, but I think I just have to go with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe for C.S. Lewis. Number uh, four is Agatha Christie, and I went with And Then There Were None for her. Again, I could have had more of a hot take here, but when I was thinking about what I think objectively is probably her masterwork, it was between this and Murder on the Orient Express, and I decided to go with this one just because I think some people have some legitimate criticisms of Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, they also have legitimate criticisms of this. Neither of them are beyond critique, but in terms of just like, genre defining like I think objectively this is probably her best book um so there you go I guess Murder of Roger Ackroyd also could have been in the mix here but I went with this one number four I decided to go with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for J.K. Rowling now I struggled here because I think it's between this one and the Deathly Hallows my personal favorite is the Deathly Hallows and I think it is in terms of like ending a series in a way that like is genuinely like really good aside from that epilogue, like I just pretend that didn't happen. But I think that that is a superb example of how to end a series in a way that's pretty darn satisfying all things considered. Um, but I went with this because I think that this is the book that like takes the series to the next level. Like the first three books are great and like it was already a phenomenon, whatever. When this book came out, it like was a game changer and I think took this series 
like it cemented the series's place in history, basically. So I think in terms of like a mystery plot in a fantasy world, you're not going to do a lot better than this. Like I just think for YA, like, yeah, this is just best in breed of this kind of book. So I decided to go with this as her best. Okay, number six is Nora Roberts. And not surprisingly, I went with the obsession just because I think that this is exactly what a standalone romantic suspense thriller should look like. I just think that this has the character piece of this down. The romance is there, but it's not overwhelming the mystery plot. The small town atmosphere is fantastic. There's a serial killer copycat component here, which I think is a great tried and true trope in this genre. It's just, she's a master. And to me, this is her masterpiece. Number seven is Christina Lauren. And I went with the Unhoneymooners for this because I think that this is as about as good as a, of a rom-com as you're gonna get. There's a couple of, of off notes in this that keep it from being like a five star, but I think that this is a really great example of romantic comedy and like the best that they've written. Now for those people who prefer her new adult books, I would say that the runner up to me is Beautiful Secret in that kind of trope category but um I don't know I prefer her rom-com so I, so to me I couldn't quite sort out what was my preference versus objectively what was the best but I decided to go with this one and I also think that this has been a uh, kind of a breakout title a little bit this year um for them so I also think this possibly is going to take their career to a new level Number eight is Mariana Zapata. And this is an example where I think that probably my favorite one is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, but I would say that probably the best one is Wait For It. Um, I think that the writing in this one is a little bit better. I think that the storyline is a little more coherent and the stakes are probably more solid. I just think as a book, this is probably a little bit better. That being said, I do pr I go back and forth if I prefer this one or The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. Probably I prefer The Wall of Winnipeg and Me and that was her like breakout title. Um, but I think in terms of like best and maybe where I would tell people who don't like romance to start with her, probably this one. Number nine is Dorothy Sayers and I went with Gaudy Knight, which I don't think is in any way, shape or form a hot take. Um, Gaudy Knight and Busman's Honeymoon are my two favorites that I've read from her. And I think that this one is just sort of iconic. Um, it is different, like it has enough things that are different about it that I think make it special, but it has that Dorothy Sayers kind of very intellectual, very um, Austin-esque basically take on a mystery genre book. So yeah, not a hot take, but I think Gaudy Knight is her best. Number 10 is Graham Greene and I went with The Quiet American for this one because I think that it's of his books that I've read, um, which admittedly is not all of them, I do think it probably is the like one that stands the test of time the best and probably the most important book of his that I've read just in terms of its kind of prescience in terms of the Vietnam War, um, its insights into human nature and sort of like the inevitable cycle of political life. Um, yeah, I just think that it's a really excellent book that ages well and it's just an example of him at his best. Number 11 is Charles Dickens. And I decided to go with Great Expectations. Now, again, this might be a little bit of my favorite versus the objectively best one. <clears throat> of the ones that I have read as an adult or like have a, a clear memory of beyond just my childhood, this is the one that I would say is the best. I think that it has all the kind of Dickensian trademark hallmark elements to it. I think it sets up atmosphere really well. It deals with class in interesting ways. It has the kind of iconic imagery of like Miss Havisham and that decaying old cake and, and wedding dress. Um, I think that it has like the kind of poignant ending that he often has. Uh, yeah, I just think character wise, this is very memorable. This is just Dickens doing Dickens on like the highest level. So I, to me, this is his best. Number 12 is Noelle Adams, and I decided to pick One Night with Her Best Friend for this one. This is, I think, the first of her One Night With series, and it is just, to me, that series is a masterclass in how you do a romance contemporary novella right. She, the conceit of it is it is about the night where two people like finally get together and I think she just understands like how to pick a conflict and how to pick a backstory that make it plausible that by the end of this novella you really believe that these two people are going to be together forever and that is I think what people really struggle sometimes in romance novellas to figure out um and this one is a really effect it's a friends to lovers trope and it basically is like the 
you know, culmination of a lot of buildup between them. So I just think it's a great example of its genre, a great example of the series that it's in, and just like a great example of why Noelle Adams so underrated and I wish more people would read her. Number 13 is Kristen Ashley and I went with The Gamble and that is because I think that so Kristen Ashley is somebody you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate and even if you love some of her stuff you may hate other of her stuff. I think The Gamble is a fantastic example of her doing her at her, in a way that is not just pure trope candy for her diehard fans. Like I think that the writing quality of this one is better than in some of her others. It's still very idiosyncratic, but it is better than like, for instance, some of like the rock chick stuff. Um, I think that the conflicts make more sense. There is definitely an alphaness there that is like just a part of the Kristen Ashley deal, but it's more on the protective alpha end. So it's less problematic than some of her heroes can be see my earlier comments in the previous video. So this is, I think, a much more friendly point of entry for somebody wanting to get into Kristen Ashley. And I think it's, it's Kristen Ashley sh stripped of a lot of the things that are not great about her. And um, I think it's a really satisfying delivery of like trope candy. Number 14 is Jessica Clare. And I've kind of ping ponged back and forth between Beauty and the Billionaire, which is probably my personal favorite Jessica Clare contemporary, or playing games. And while I think Beauty and the Billionaire is sort of her breakout title, like I think that's the book that a lot of people know her from, I think I would ultimately say that I think playing games is a little bit better of a book. I think that plot wise, it's more effective. It's the conceit is around them being on a type of uh, amazing race esque game show. So it has a very specific pacing to it that I think works well, and kind of keeps things on track. I think that the build up between the two main characters is really nice. It has some smutty scenes in it, which she's definitely known for. I just think that it's probably a better book, even though I personally prefer Beauty and the Billionaire, because you know, your girl is a fucking sucker for a Beauty and the Beast trope. So um, yeah, I think that I'd say playing games is probably her best. Number 15 is Susan Mallory. And I decided to go with three little words by her. I was back and forth because again, my favorite in that series is Before We Kiss because I think it's really funny and it, it takes a lot of the things that are very charming about a small town romance and like really brings it into the more romantic comedy end of things. And like, I liked some of the conflict, but in terms of, because the, the Fool's Gold series has a very specific kind of formula in terms of its overall plot arc-ness, I think that this is probably the culmination of that and the best example of it in the series in terms of like, it is like the platonic ideal of a fool's gold book, I think basically is what I'm trying to get at. So um, I still really like this one a lot. It's it's really good. It's got like a fake relationship thing happening, which I'm always down for. Um, but yeah, I think it's sort of like the most fool's goldy fool's gold book in that series. And I think that that series is probably the best one she's done. Number 16 is Flannery O'Connor, and I went with A Good Man is Hard to Find by Flannery O'Connor. Uh, there's two short story collections that she has, A Good Man is Hard to Find and Everything That Rises Must Converge. I think that the, the highs of A Good Man is Hard to Find are higher than Everything That Rises Must Converge, which is why I picked it, though I would say that maybe the overall quality of Everything That Rises Must Converge it might be a little bit better. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I decided because I think A Good Man Is Hard To Find, that short story in particular is like the quintessential O'Connor short story. Yeah, I decided to go with the collection that it is in. And it is the eponymous story in that collection. Number 17 is Penny Reed. And while I personally prefer Love Hacked or Dating-ish, I think objectively the best book she's ever written is Neanderthal Meets Human. I think that if it just is like very quintessential Penny Reed, it is the Penny Reediest Penny Reed that there is. And uh, it really was her breakout book. I think that's where she kind of figured out what it was she wants to do. Like, I think she kind of figured out her project in that book. Um, and while, um, you know, I think the Beard books have been also very iconic. I need to get more into that series. Um, I think from what I've read, Neanderthal Seeks Human is probably the best Penny Reed that there is going. Number 18 is Lindsay Sands. And I would say that the best Lindsay Sands or the most Lindsay Sandsian Sands book, this, that's kind of the thing the last few of these of like the quintessential or like the platonic ideal of that author. For her historicals, I would say The Highlander Takes a Bride 
is the most Lindsay Sands historical there is. Like it just is so, everybody in it is so nice and so dumb and so beautiful. And like, there's this like nonsense mystery plot happening in the middle of a lock. And it's so silly. It just doesn't take itself very seriously. And it's just like Scottish historical rompy fun. And if you like that book, you should read more of her because it's the best version, I think, of that kind of historical. Um, that it, And now that I've read Julie Garwood, I think it's in that kind of tradition. Um, but anyway, it just, it's, I love that book. And I do think it's the best of the kind of historical she writes. Number 19 is Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And you guys know that I'm an absolute sucker for her The Naturals series, uh, which I think is unquestionably the best thing she's done so far in her career. Of those books I would say the second one which is Bad Blood is my favorite but there is not a bad book in that entire series um this one I just think in terms of the the character dynamics I think it really nails it um I like there's a love triangle in the early part of the series and I like that she sort of wrapped that up in this book and didn't let it linger and and kind of use the wrap up to make this very emotionally effective I think that the um, specific plot elements are really good. Yeah, I just think that this is the best one in the series, but you should really just read the whole series. And number 20 is Katie Wilde, and I'm gonna go with the book that actually got me into Katie Wilde, and that is The Midwinter Mail Order Bride. This cover is iconic, I love this cover, but this whole Deadlands series, like this world for sort of a lighthearted fantasy romance, which is where I would put this, this isn't what I would consider to be like serious fantasy romance or like where the world is like super elaborate or like that's not what it's trying to do. It's trying to create a world that is interesting and kind of quick and you don't need to know all the details of it to enjoy the story. And I just think that it's super effective. Like this is, it, it does a really good job. It's a barbarian romance and like it plays with those tropes in an interesting way. Um, I think that it does a great job of like giving you enough of the world to make this an interesting story without getting too bogged down in all of the world building details. I just think that it's really good. And um, I like her contemporaries as well, but I really like her fantasy romance in particular. So that was my 20 best books from 20 authors in under 20 minutes as a companion to the other video you guys saw. So let me know how you feel about my picks, if you've read any of these authors, if you strongly agree or disagree in terms of uh, the objective quality of some of my picks, definitely feel free to let me know. If you've got a passionate argument for a different one of their books being the best, definitely would love to hear that. Like you heard, I think some of these I was a little bit conflicted on. So that will do it for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. Hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.